It bothers me because that doesn't seem to be the same Hollywood treatment when it comes to black women. And I'm not talking about maybe 7% black Meghan Markle, who now is hoping she's more black because she can use the black card. I'm talking about real black victims in Hollywood, where there seems to be so much silence regarding their stories. And there's a particular story that I want to make you aware of because you should be horrified about it. I am horrified about it. Before we even talk about that story, I want to say this is not the fault of white people or white media, right? It is also a, it points to a cultural issue when it comes to black people as well, right? And the bigotry of low expectations when it comes to black culture. An example of that bigotry I experienced when I was young, I had a crush on this black guy in my class named Jamal, and Jamal and I shared an economics class in high school, and we would talk for hours on the phone at home. We also had a biology class together. We'd get through our homework together. And then one day in economics class, I don't remember why my professor brought this up, or teacher rather, it was high school, Mr. White asked a question about snitches, right? And whether or not people should come forth if they knew something to be true. And Jamal said, Jamal used to live on the east side. He said, I would never snitch. And Mr. White looked at Jamal and he said, what do you mean you would never snitch? Mr. Mr. White said, okay, what about, I have a daughter. If you witness that in a drive-by shooting, my daughter, my young daughter got shot and died, Jamal, tell me that you would tell the police that you, the person that you saw did it. If you, if you saw the person who shot him. Jamal got up, was trying to act real hood. Man, I would never say nothing. Not where I'm from. You don't snitch for no reason. You don't snitch. You don't nothing. No, you don't say anything. That's just not. It's against the code. I remember looking at Jamal and just watching, watching my crush disappear. I just went, I want nothing to do with this filthy animal that would watch a child get shot, watch a child die, and thinks that it's cool, that it's some part of the code, this unspoken black code not to say anything. I want nothing to do with that code, period. Call me a snitch. I don't care. If I watch a child get shot and I know who did it, I am telling the officers. I am telling the family. I want nothing to do with the cancerous culture that tells me otherwise. Why am I telling you guys this, this completely innocuous story from my high school? Because it's not so innocuous, right? Because people like Jamal grow up and they become people that don't say something. And so is the circumstance when it comes to an artist named Megan the Stallion. Now, you, if you listen to my podcast, probably don't also listen to Megan the Stallion's music. In fact, in case you don't know who she is, she is one half of the now infamous WAP song with Cardi B. I find the song to be derogatory. I find it to be disrespectful, disrespectful and degrading toward women, right? Reducing women to their body parts. And you guys know that I don't support that kind of music. I want to be very clear about that. But what happened and what is playing out with Megan Thee Stallion in her real life, not in just her performance life, is one of the most hideous things that I've ever seen. The fact that the person that is behind this has not been canceled is incredible to me. Megan Thee Stallion was dating a rapper named Tori Lanes. okay? And one night they went to Kylie Jenner's house for a party. Apparently this was a fun pool party. And everyone had a great time and people were drinking. And there's no question after having read the story that Megan Thee Stallion was drinking. In fact, people say she's known Megan Thee Stallion to get a little rowdy when she drinks. Well, I would argue that Megan, Rowley's, uh, Megan Thee Stallion's also rowdy when she's sober. You got to be a little rowdy to produce a song like WAP, wow, but that doesn't matter whether or not she was drunk. It doesn't matter how much she was drinking. They left the party, a driver, Megan Thee Stallion, her best friend, a young woman named Kelsey, and her boyfriend, Tory Lanez. And a fight, okay, between Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez breaks out in the car. Megan asks to get out of the car. The driver pulls over. Megan gets out of the vehicle and alleges, and there's a lot of evidence pointing out this is exactly what happened, that Tory Lanez whipped out his gun and said, dance, and began firing bullets into the ground, forcing her to jump around, except he landed one and she was shot in her foot that night. Megan's best friend, Kelsey, then texts Megan's bodyguard, who is not on site, who is not in the car, and says that he shot her. Tory Lanez has shot Megan, 911. This is a crazy situation. 
Of course, because bullets were fired, somebody nearby heard this and the police were called. And eventually their vehicle gets pulled over. Megan, you can see in this footage I am about to show you, she is limping and there is a trail of blood behind her. And of course, officers made them get on the ground to assess the situation, to see what was going on. Megan the Stallion then required surgery in her foot. Surgery in her foot because her boyfriend, who she had just gotten into a fight with, shot her, okay? Now, I know we live in the world where violence is our words and silence is violence. This is real violence. This is real physical, physical violence, the worst kind of violence that you could ever imagine between a man and a woman. You are talking about someone who just shot a person, okay? So what happens next? Well, there's a lot of speculations, articles ran, people didn't know what happened. But I'll tell you what happened online. Megan was mocked by women and men alike, particularly in black culture. People they couldn't believe like, this situation happened. They think it's funny maybe that she got shot in the foot and, and had to get surgery performed. You're not seeing a bunch of people that are calling out Tory Lanez for this violence, no. What happened was Tory Lanez, at least by Megan's testimony, she is now in trial for the, on trial for this, right? Actually doing the right thing and testifying against him. He offered her and her friend Kelsey a million dollars apiece. Why? Because Tory Lanez is from Canada. And if he is found guilty, not only will he serve time in prison, but he is also likely to be deported back to Canada. He doesn't want that to happen because he's a successful rapper. So he offered them money and she refused that money, rightfully refused that money. This woman is a victim. Something happened in that car. I don't think she shot herself in the foot and decided to go into the hospital. But it's amazing what then transpired, right? Because of this, let's call it no snitching culture, maybe. Stitches get, snitches get, stitches. Give me all the stitches because let this happen to me. I am snitching. This is horrific violence, okay? So what happens next is that her friend Kelsey turns on her. Kelsey, who was in the car. Kelsey, who said, uh, 911, he just shot her, now doesn't recall anything. And when Kelsey took the stand and testified in the trial, Kelsey basically, just to sum it up, said, I don't recall. I don't recall. I'm not sure. I guess her memory has gotten fuzzy. Maybe she accepted the million dollars somehow. Or maybe she's thinking, I'm in the rap world where it matters for me to say that I keep my mouth shut because that's culturally cool and that's culturally relevant. What's actually happening is a horrific form of hatred toward her former friend who is bravely standing up and saying that something horrible happened to her, right? No, she doesn't remember. She can't, she can't recall anything. Now, regard, regarding the uh, bodyguard, who was texted, he can't be found. Yeah, he was supposed to be questioned earlier this week, and they can't find him. He's just gone missing. Is he dead? No, probably not. Is he paid off? I don't know. Is he avoiding this trial for a reason? Yeah, because snitches get stitches or something, right? And Tory Lanez is, is showing up well-dressed to these court hearings. He's, he's trying to allege that Megan is potentially lying He's actually dropped songs talking about this event. He's trying to murky the details enough, of course, that they can't actually prosecute him, right? No one's showing up. Nobody's testifying. Nobody's saying anything. So now this case has essentially become Megan the Stallion's word against Tory Lanez's word. And culture likes Tory Lanez. And men are standing by him. No one's canceled him again. He didn't say anything. He did something. He actually did violence. He didn't say violence, right? So I guess in our, in our world, that's totally fine. I haven't seen demands for this man to be canceled. I haven't seen every single person speaking out and saying that whatever sponsorships he has. I mean, I haven't heard that his record label has dropped him, which would make sense. I would imagine there is some clause against violence, against actually shooting someone. No, nothing has happened. I cannot imagine being Megan the Stallion in this moment. I can't imagine it. I can't imagine have her, having suffered something so obviously traumatic and being surrounded by absolute vultures, people who are perhaps accepting money, people who are perhaps concerned about what it's going to mean so that they can remain cool and relevant in the culture if they keep their mouth shut, while you were properly victimized and suffered a horrific event. I can't imagine what it's like going to an event and seeing that people don't care right? That this person is still allowed into all of the same rooms that you're allowed to, that people are still applauding him online. 
that fellow artists haven't spoken out in your defense and said this is ridiculous. I also can't imagine what it must be like for her, and I want to choose my words very carefully here because I am not trying to blame the victim in this circumstance. But at a certain point, there is going to have to be a reckoning in Black culture amongst the artists to realize that even in the music that we create, in the music that Megan the Stallion creates, she perpetuates this kind of culture that allows this. When you degrade women in your music and young people listen to that music, they allow and believe that women should also be degraded in the real world, right? When you reduce yourself in your music, you can become reduced in the real world. All of it needs fixing. It is so wrong. It is so backwards. It is so horrific. And I am going to pray out loud that Megan the Stallion gets justice because I can't, I just, it is unimaginable to me that we have a world that will give $100 million to Meghan Markle because Frogmore Cottage was too small, right? That will allow Amber Heard to write this pompous, arrogant statement that will allow Kesha to not even have to apologize after having dropped a lawsuit that demanded the entire world's attention. And yet that same world essentially spits Megan the Stallion out. It's wrong.